verse there. Then I'll come back and read a few verses in Luke chapter 14. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. Praise God. You have 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. Here's what the Bible says. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. St. Luke chapter 14, the Bible states in verse 25, And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whatsoever doth not, and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he hath sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man begin to build and was not able to finish. Please notice in verse 28, the Bible said, counteth the cost. Counteth the cost. In our verse that we read in 1 John chapter 5, there was a word called victory. And I want to preach to you tonight that the price of defeat is greater than the cost of victory. The price of defeat is greater than the cost of victory. People usually ask one of their first questions when they see something or hear of something they would like to have is how much does it cost? And contrary to the modern approach to Christianity, it is going to cost you something to go to heaven. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ, the cost is high. There is a price to pay to go to heaven. And the modernistic uh, preachers today, many of them have no price tag. And if they do have a price tag, it is a marked down price on a cheap altar of cheap grace. But I must inform you as a minister of God that there is a price tag attached to salvation. And although salvation itself is free, it is not cheap. Somebody paid the price. And when I search the records that are listed in this book, I see that others have paid a price to make heaven their home. Stay with me. I want to preach to you. We are making a mistake when teaching this generation that there is no cost in being a disciple of Christ. We are teaching even in the holiness church, amen, that we can measure our spirituality by our shout or by our feelings, or by our emotions. And in so doing, we're failing to prepare this generation for a realistic walk with God. But it's going to cost something to make heaven your home. Oh, yes, this Christian race is not a 50-yard dash. If it was, many would make it all the way home. But it is an endurance test. And you must continue and endure 
endure to the end if you want to be saved. I must tell you once again, it will cost you to make heaven your home. It is a road of self-denial. And Jesus, as I read to you in my text, said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That doesn't sound like the gospel so-called that these modernistics are preaching. They are preaching prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. But you hear the old-fashioned preacher tonight. Before I take you and give you a prosperity plan, I'm going to bring you to the road of Calvary and to a fountain that's filled with blood and tell you, amen, in order to be uh, saved, you must crucify the flesh and crucify the fleshly desires if you want to make heaven your home. Help me while I preach. Hallelujah. Oh yes, the Bible said in Luke 13 and 24, to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Amen. What does the word strive mean? It means to make an all out effort. To work hard. To try hard. To contend. To enter in at the straight gate. For many shall seek to enter and will not be able. We are are admonished to count the cost and the cost or the price of something is usually determined by the value you get in return whenever you think about making heaven your home when you think about hearing him say well done thou good and faithful servant enter thou into the joys of the Lord when you think about being forever with Jesus there is no price that could ever be a attached to salvation that would equal what we are getting in return. Victory is never cheap. You can call me a bum. You can call me a fanatic. You can even say I'm crazy, but just don't call me a loser. I'm planning on being a winner. I'm going to win the victory. Hallelujah. I said victory is never cheap. For instance, this United States flag that we have here tonight, it gives us liberty and freedom right here in America. It would not be waving tonight if somebody had not paid a price. Did you hear me? I said it would not be waving. We would not have the privilege of being gathered here. And I don't mind telling you it bothers me when I see some of these little wimpy guys running around with necklaces around their necks and earrings in their ears burning the United States flag it bothers me because I know somebody paid a price amen for that flag to be here how about it son give me that flag bring it over here a little closer when those veterans of foreign wars amen come around and they start asking for donations for their little flags amen some don't have but one arm some don't have but one leg some don't have but one eye amen always try to give them something in appreciation amen for what they did for me are you listening to what I'm telling you amen don't you ever come around me wearing a t-shirt saying no fear and you will not even salute the American flag amen you will not you want to burn or desecrate the flag the reason young men and other men want to burn the flag they don't have anything invested in it oh yes but some of us have something invested and the reason so many preachers are willing to let the standards of holiness down they don't have anything invested but some of us have stood out there for years flat footed and preached and said thus saith the word of the Lord let me hurry on here I'm proud to be an American I am patriotic if you don't love it leave it hallelujah I travel over the world and I still say America is the best land amen 
in anywhere in this world. And I appreciate those men that fought for this American flag. Listen to me now. Amen. In 1945, 52 years ago, our American soldiers landed on a beach, amen, called Iwo Jima. It was a little eight and a half square mile island between Guam and Japan. It was a key location and a strategic point in winning the victory over the Japs. Our American soldiers landed on that beach with one goal in mind, and that was raising this American flag on the mountain called Sarabak. Amen. When they hit the beachhead, amen, blood flowed like water. Soldier after soldier was shot down. Some had their faces shot off. Amen. And over, calling over dead bodies. They made their way up that mountain. Amen. Carrying this flag. Historians say as soon as that body was shot out from under the flag somebody else would get the flag and head on to the top of that mountain they had one thought in mind we're going to pay the price amen we're going to pay the price after a while they begin to drive the chaps off of the top of that mountain and after a while someone over the top of the bodies of their dead buddies raised the flag for the United States of America and set it on that island there. What was the price? What was the cost? 6,821 American GIs were killed. 19,000 were wounded. You say, what a high price. What a terrible price. But those American soldiers knew that the cost of their defeat, if they were defeated, would be high higher than the cost of victory. I appreciate them doing it. Hear me, my grandchildren would probably be speaking Japanese or German if those men had not fought. Are you listening? We wouldn't have free enterprise like we have it. Oh no, you ladies couldn't make all your sales. Amen, but somebody fought that we could have liberty and freedom. It costs something. Someone may have said to those soldiers, the price is too high. But when they considered the price of defeat, they decided it's going to cost us to win the victory. But the cost of victory will be less than the cost of defeat. So I want to talk to you tonight about another price that was paid for victory. The Bible says, in Romans 5 and 12 wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for all have sinned that's you and you and you and you and you we all had the sentence of death upon us amen we were all destined to go to hell for we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God death passed upon all men. God tried different methods amen to reconcile lost humanity to himself. Amen. He shed the blood of lambs and of goats and the bulls and the ashes of heifers but none of this could take away the guilt of sin of humanity but one day the cry of guilty humanity amen turned the locks of mercy in God's heavenly world and God sent a matchless lamb Jesus Christ the son of God who came with one purpose in mind and that was to pay the price for my salvation for your salvation he came to pay the price he was rejected oh yes he was he was refused the world refused him he was arrested. He was tried in Pilate's judgment hall. They whipped his back. 
until according to Josephus amen his entrails were protruding from his rib cage his bowels were actually running out they tortured him so the Bible said his visage was more marred than any man but after a while we see him and I hate to see these artists draw those little wimpy looking pictures of Jesus Christ there never was a more determined man a more relentless man there never was a man like Jesus amen who shed his eyes amen on the goal of the cross like a flint he was set and headed toward Jerusalem and to Calvary to pay the price as his back was bleeding as he was suffering the crowd crying out crucify crucify they spit upon him put a crown of thorns on his head and somebody may have cried out and said why not give it up it's too high a cost you're paying too much but hear him say to this end was I born and for this cause I came into the world oh he could have presently call more than 12 legions of angels but he knew the cost of defeat would be greater than the cost of victory I'd be in hell tonight you'd be in hell tonight but Jesus was willing to pay the price for victory Oh, hallelujah. Listen, all the world will be lost. It's going to cost you something now to win the victory. Salvation has already been paid for. But when you start looking at such scriptures as 2 Corinthians 7, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, then I will receive you and be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. It's going to cost something. Look at the man that's given up on life. Look what it cost him. How many men here work on a public job? It's going for quiet here. Nobody works. Everybody on welfare. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's rough when that alarm goes off to have to get up, go out on the job, hit it again, eight, ten hour shift. But look at the man who give up on the economy. He's standing out there with a little old sign, dirty, filthy clothes on homeless amen we'll work for food oh no he wouldn't amen he's already given up on life oh yes it'll cost you something but young man just be glad that you still have enough zip and get up and go in you and enough of the red blood of the american pioneer amen that you're willing to get up and go out on a job those of you that are married It'll cost you something to keep your marriage together. Oh, yes, there's a price to keep the home together. Oh, you say, well, Brother Rich, I see him going to the divorce courts all the time. I do too. But I also see the little children that are torn between mama and daddy. Some are crying to go with mother. Some are crying to go with daddy. The court separates them. I see the heartache and different multiple marriages that are not working out. It'll cost you something to keep your family together, but the price of defeat will be greater than the cost of victory. Somebody say amen. amen. Woo! I'm beginning to feel like preaching now. Hallelujah. My ministry has cost me something. Oh, yes. Sure, I get tired. Sure, I get weary. Sure, sometimes I get tired of people calling me that old foggy Don Rich. But oh, the cost of defeat will be greater 
than my cost of victory. So hear me tonight. Amen. You can talk about me. Scandalize my name. But I'm going on with Jesus. Just the same. Hallelujah. I must run on. Though in sorrow and pain. I must run on. Through the heat and the rain. I must run on. Though I lose my best friend. I must run on. I know I'll win in the end. I've got one goal in mind. Defeat is one word. I don't use I'm on my way to heaven and I'm going to be pronounced a winner you say brother Rich it's going to cost you it has already cost me quite a bit but when I hear him say well done thou good and faithful servant the price will seem cheap to make heaven my home listen to me in Romans or Revelation rather 12 Verses 11 and 12, the writer said, Woe to you inhabitants of the earth and sea, for Satan has come down unto you, having great wrath, for he knoweth that he hath but a short time. But, now the verse down says, but they overcame him. I'm going to be an overcomer. How about you? I do not want to be defeated. I want to be an overcomer. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, I'm not trying to get in an argument with any Bible scholar. I'm not trying to throw out anything that would cause any contention. But it's all right to preach the Bible, is it? Amen. Whoever these people are, wherever they came from, I'm not sure, but in Revelation, 7 I read about a great multitude that no man can number each one had on white robes they had palms in their hands they were singing the song of victory and one of the elders asked John this question who are these and whence came they and John said sir thou knowest and the elder answered and said these are they that came out of great tribulation and have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. I've never seen so many people looking for an easy road into heaven. One young preacher came up to me and said, Brother Rich, you travel all over the United States and I'm getting ready to go out in full-time ministry and I'd like to start pastoring. Maybe you can tell me where there's an easy place. Brother, we're not on a Caribbean cruise Amen. We're sailing the old ship of Zion. It's battered and scarred. We're sailing the bloody seas of time. And our journey will not be finished until we harbor safely in the heaven's gold and heaven's portals. There is no easy places. If they did these things in a green tree, what will they do in the dry? I read in the book of Revelation, chapter 15, verse 2. And John the Revelator said, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingle with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over the number of his name, and they stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God and they sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb and they loved not their lives even unto death you say preacher it's too hard to live for Jesus the price is too high you need to look at what it's going to cost if you don't live for Jesus you need to look at what it's going to cost if you do not turn loose of your sins somebody said it's just too hard amen to turn loose I've enjoyed the things of the world so long it's just too hard and surely an all loving God would not require that of me listen after God sent heaven's best the pearl of great price the lamb of God to this old sin cursed world you hear me there is no distance 
distance too far to travel. There is no load too heavy to carry. There is no pain too severe to bear. There is no price too high to pay. If you can hear him say, well done, you've won the victory. It will be worth it. Sister Rich and I, all right, go switch me around a little, huh? Sister Rich and I, almost 40 years ago now, we left a beautiful home situated on the top of the highest hill in Grover City, California, looking out over the beautiful Pacific Ocean. It cost something, but I had a call on my life. So I gladly sold my business I gladly turned loose of everything that had me attached. And I took that little old black-headed girl, not quite as black-headed as she was back then, but I took her and loaded her in a car with two little babies and we set out preaching. Brother, there's been times when we did not have the money, amen, to get a motel room. Amen, if somebody would have said fifth wheel, we'd have thought you're talking in a foreign language. We didn't know what a fifth wheel was. Amen, we've slept in the car. We've ate bologna and got the babies. Amen, cartons of milk from the grocery store. But oh, praise God, when I gather my sheaves around me in that heavenly world and I see the souls that Jesus has helped me win, it's going to be worth it all. Woo! The cost of defeat is too high. I said the, it's a high cost. Oh, John the Revelator said in Revelation 20, verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Oh, yes. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the things which were written in the books. And it goes on to say death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever's names was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hear me, hell, terrible, burning, everlasting, eternal hell is too high a price for the few little pleasures of sin you're enjoying tonight. It'd be easy just to be defeated. You got to keep up the fight. Whew. Keep on fighting. Amen. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Oh, I've got to make it. Yes, I've had them to talk about me. I've had them to get upset because I wouldn't get involved in every little church problem that comes along. He said, as a compromiser, you ask me, anybody ask me what I believe on any issue, I'll tell you like that, it won't even bat my eye. But I do not have time to get into every fuss that folks have in every church I go. Amen, I'm not going to get involved in it. Why? I have but one goal, and that's to make heaven my home. <coughs> I'm hurrying on here. <coughs> Some commit suicide. They thought life was too hard. But oh, the price of defeat. I don't know how many problems you have. I don't know how many cares you have. But your soul is worth more than all the problems. And those that take a gun, stick to their head, thinking they're getting out of all their troubles. Brother, you're just now starting your troubles. The price of defeat is greater than the price of victory. In Revelation 6 and 9, the revelator saw the fifth seal opened and he said, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony for which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the face of the earth. 
And white robes was given unto them, every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Hey, the cost of defeat is greater than the cost of victory. Now let me get down real personal. Oh, don't you love it when I get personal? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even Jesus Amen. The Bible said, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. Oh, yes, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, for consider him, amen, who endured such contradiction of sinners, lest ye also be weary and faint in your mind. You're not going to be popular with this old world when you take your stand for Jesus. Did you hear me? You're not going to be accepted when you take your stand for Jesus. The world's going to despise you. They're going to hate you and just your presence is going to bring condemnation on them. When you good holy sisters walk around in your good holiness dresses and those ladies are in their pants, you don't have to say nothing. They feel it. Uh-huh. And they don't like it. You know why? Under condemnation. I was in the hospital not long ago there in Oklahoma, or California rather, where my mother was at. A lady I knew that's supposed to went to the holiness church came in. She was in her pants. Her grandson had been in an accident. She had no idea meeting me down there at one o'clock in the morning. I didn't say a word. I said, how are you doing, sister? Oh, my grandson's in bad shape. He's in an accident. I said, I'm sorry to hear about it. Oh, Brother Rich. I just had to get ready real quick. And I grabbed these old pants. I didn't say a word about it. She could have grabbed an old dress just as quick as she grabbed that old, them old pants. He even said, I grabbed these old pants and got up here as quick as I could. said, I feel so bad two or three times. I didn't say a word. I'll tell you, whenever you live a sanctified life, the world's going to know it. When you dress different than the world, the world's going to know it. Amen. When you take your stand and you refuse the offers of the world, the world's going to know it. It'll cost you something to be different. It'll cost you something to be separate. But if you don't, you're going to be defeated. And the high cost of defeat is greater than the cost of victory. Now listen to me. Listen to me. A few years ago I was preaching revival. A man got under conviction. He came to the altar to give his heart to the Lord. He did give his heart to the Lord. He really prayed through. When he got up, his wife was with him. She wouldn't come to the altar. When he got up, she started mocking him and laughing and pointing her finger at him. He went on back and sit down. I thought, well, that's okay. If I can just get her to come back tomorrow night, I'll, maybe I can get her in the altar. She came back the next night with her husband who had been saved the night before. And all the time I preach, she sat back at Sticking out her tongue, making faces at me. I just kept on preaching. Seen a lot of ugly faces, but it never stopped me from preaching. I'm still preaching tonight. Okay, I won't, I'll just move on real quick now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I was preaching away, and she was making faces. I went back and invited her to the altar, and she laughed at me. Her husband came on to the altar, kept on praying, and finally she told him, said, if you keep going to that church and down to that altar, I'm going to leave you. 
So he came and talked to the pastor and said, my wife is threatening to leave me if I don't quit coming to this church and praying. What should I do? And bless that dear pastor's heart. He said, why don't you talk to the evangelist, Brother Rich, about it? So she come over and talk. He come over and talked to me about it. And said, my wife has threatened to leave me if I don't uh, quit coming to church and praying. So what do you say? Now it's always been my a great desire to keep families together. Amen. I've always worked at that end. And so I told him that that was my desire. But I also told him that if it stood between him and God Almighty, it is better to obey God than man. So he kept coming to the church. And uh, at the end of the revival, we announced a water baptismal service on Sunday afternoon. So he came Saturday night told the pastor, said, I really want to get baptized in water, but my wife gave me the ultimatum. She said, if you're baptized in water, I'm leaving you and not staying with you another day. Now he said, ask the pastor, what should I do? Bless his heart. He said, why don't you go talk to Brother Rich about it? So he came over. I gave him the same answer. You cannot put no one ahead of God. Jesus said, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. No one can ever come between you and God. God is a jealous God. I said God is a jealous God. He will let not have no other gods before him. Listen to me. So we announced the water baptismal service. We went out on the bank of the river. The church gathered there. I think we had 17 new converts to be baptized. You know, I like them old-fashioned water baptismal services. Had the old guitar out there and the organ. People singing, shall we gather at the river? The beautiful, the beautiful river. I preached a little while on the bank. And me, the pastor and I went out into the water. My method is to take every candidate for water baptism out into the water at the same time. Let them all stay out there till it's all over. And I had them all out there lined up and we started baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of the Lord was a moving. About that time we heard a car driving up, went up on top of the hill. It was this man and his wife he was dressed in a suit. He got out and she got out. They sat up there on the car and watched the water baptismal service. We kept baptizing them one by one. Finally, we got to the last one. We were taking them out of the water. And the people were congratulating them and they were singing. And some was a shouting and rejoicing. And I just stepped back in the water about this deep. And when things sort of settled down, I lifted my hand. I said, maybe there's somebody out there. You're saved and you know you're saved. And you have not been baptized. And you want to be baptized in water. I'm waiting on you right now. About that time up on that bank, that fella looked over at his wife, took off his coat, and said, Honey, I love you, but I love Jesus even more. Threw her his coat, run about 20 or 30 steps, threw his bill full back to her, hit that water. I almost went under before I could get a hold of him. Finally got a hold of him, baptized him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and brought him up out of that water. Hey, listen, it cost him something to come off of that bank. It cost him something to tell her, honey, I love you, but I love God even more. Two days later, I was preaching in the state of Arkansas. They called me and said that man was on his way to work and a big tanker truck 
came over on his side of the road and hit him and took him out into eternity. Oh, if he could talk to you tonight, he'd tell you it cost me. When I told my wife, honey, I love you, but I love Jesus more. It cost me something, but the price of my defeat would have been higher than the cost of victory. Hear what I'm telling you. Amen. Live for God. Don't let nothing stand between you and the Lord. Be willing to leave it all behind. Oh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, woo. I had a hard time getting started. I may have a hard time getting stopped now. I'm talking to you. You, 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 you. You want to justify your hurts. You want to justify your backslidings. You want to justify the fact that you're still in sin. How can you look at Calvary? How can you look at the suffering and justify yourself in your sins? There's only one place you can be justified and that's to come to the fountain that's filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And there... And there alone can you be justified. Whew. Listen to me. It'll cost. But the cost of defeat. If you come to this altar tonight, backslider, it'll cost you something. But it'll cost you more if you don't come. Mm. Oh, yes. I read my preaching too long, Brother Collins. No, she's looking at your watch. I don't mind them looking at their watch. I just hate for them to take them out and beat them on the front bench in front of them. Listen, see if they're still running. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm talking to you backslider. I'm talking to you sinner. I'm talking to you that's playing with the world. It's going to cost you more if you're defeated than it will if you make heaven your home. Listen. According to to a story I heard recently. There was a man by the name of Randy Creedy. According uh, to historians, it is the greatest case of backsliding that's been recorded in modern day church history. Randy Creedy lived in the bush country of Africa, had a different name, and a medical doctor and missionary from London, England, came to Africa. There he fell in as good friends with this young African boy. He decided to take him back to England with him. He took him out of the bush country, the savage country, and took him back to England. There he gave him his name, his last name, Creedy, and he named the young man Randy Creedy. There he educated and cultured this young man in London, England. He sent him to medical school, and he graduated from medical school. Amen. He sent him on, amen, to seminary, and he graduated from seminary. There he met a young girl and married her in England, a, a young English woman married her. And he, they decided to go back to his people as missionaries, back to Africa, back to where the savages were. When he got there, they started trying to do missionary work. But every time he would hear those drums beating, over there as those savages danced around their fires. He told his wife, he said, there is drums beating in my chest. When I hear those drums beating, I feel beatings and vibrations in my chest. He kept getting closer day by day. Finally, one day, Randy Creedy went to where these young men were dancing naked around and around the fire. As he listened, 
his breast, his chest began to vibrate. And before he knew it, he had ripped off his clothing, ran out with the savages, and once again was dancing around and around the fire. Never did go back to his wife. Never went back to his baby. She finally had to leave and go back home and told the story. Well, let me tell you something, Randy Creedy. If I'd have been there, I'd have told you when you feel and hear those drums of beating in your chest run to the cross of Calvary call on the name of Jesus and listen to me it's dangerous to get too close to the world it's dangerous to get too close to the things of the world that beating will start in your breast oh yes those of us that's been saved over 40 years I've been saved 40 years ago I was listening to Ernest Tubbs sing, I'm walking the floor over you. Amen. She's my Filipino baby. And all those songs, hear me. I can accidentally hear that over the radio. And those words will come to me just like they did over 40 years ago. Say, what are you saying, Brother Rich? I'm saying get as far away from the world as you can. Make up your mind. You're going to throw the world overboard. And you're going to go for Jesus. Preachers, there'll be a cost to pay if you're passive to the devil in sin. Don't try to make a league with the devil. Now listen, Mr. Devil, if you don't bother me, I won't bother you. Well, I'm here to tell you, I'm going to expose the devil. I'm going to expose sin. It's the devil's desire to take every one of you to hell as fast as he can. But you've got to make up your mind. You'll pay the price and separate from yours.